Welcome to another episode of Crossroads. We're going to discuss today the second oldest courthouse in Bartow County. And before we go over to that courthouse, we decided to stop here in Caspel. I want to introduce Michelle Rogers, who will be the director of this program. Michelle is the director of the Bartow History Center. Michelle, it's hard to believe that in this little village that this was the largest city in Georgia, north of Atlanta, for several years. It was, you know, really quite a thriving metropolis, and we're standing on the side of the, the city, or the, the county square here. That's right. Um, I know, I read at, at one time that, that mail sent to northwest Georgia was sent via Caspel. I mean, it was it was a city of, of that much size that, that mail went through here. Uh -huh. And uh, there were a couple of colleges here, a male college and a female college. I mean, it was a thriving, bustling town. It's it's too bad that the railroad bypassed it. And, and you know, it was the county seat here, and, and the courthouse was here. I believe you know something about the early courthouse here? Well, the early courthouse was a rectangular building, two stories high, and as I understand it, it had double wide doors on all four sides, and then the, the lower floor was used as for the courthouse, mm -hmm. which is unusual. It's usually the, the second floor. And it was brick, too, wasn't it? It, brick was, building? it was brick and was considered the, one of the finest buildings of its day. Mm -hmm. it, it only cost $9,000 to construct, so it makes you wonder about that. Well. But in any event, uh, Okay, this is a very historic site here. The, it goes back to the time of the Cherokees who mm -hmm. still lived here when this was the county seat. And the other thing is that, uh, of course, Sherman burned the city, including the courthouse. So we have, there are no known photographs of, um, of this site here. And I'd love to find some early photographs of, of the courthouse in Caswell or of the rest of Caswell for that matter. Um, so far they've been scarce. <laughs> Very scarce. Um, we think we have a photograph of the uh, female seminary, right. the, the female college that was here. And another source I have tells me that he has a, a photograph of the business district, not the whole business district, but a, an attorney's office here in Castle. That's great. So those those are the two only the only two known photographs that I know of of, of the village that's still in existence. I think what we should do now is uh, go on to Cartersville and, and look at the second oldest courthouse in in the county. Okay. We're outside the old county courthouse now, um, what some people may call the second county courthouse. It's in downtown Cartersville and was the courthouse that was built here after the Civil War. Um, the original courthouse was in Cassville and was destroyed during the Civil War in 1864. And so after the war, the folks in Cassville couldn't rebuild that courthouse, didn't want to be the county seat anymore. And so Cartersville was chosen as the new county seat. and local people pledged money to build this building. It was not built out of county funds per se, but out of actual subscriptions by local residents. People like Lewis Tumlin and uh, Mr. Leak and uh, John Clayton and, and folks like that pledged money to build this building. And it was begun soon after 1865. Um, the first contractors apparently for some reason didn't complete the building and so the local builders, Zimrod Jackson and, and company, finished the building. So it's got a wonderful local connection um, you know, with actual builders from, from here who finished it. It's unusual because it's one of the few courthouses in Georgia that's of an Italian style and so that makes it extra special to us. From some of the records that we have um, that, that tell about the building of this courthouse, we know that even though construction began probably in six, 1865 or 66, it dragged on for a number of years and we can speculate about some of the reasons. It was during reconstruction, so probably money was pretty tight. Um, probably supplies weren't as, as, as readily available. And so construction dragged on until the building wasn't completed until 1873. But we do know that they started holding court in the building probably as early as 1869. So it was finished enough to do that earlier. But definitely by 1873, it was in use as the courthouse. And now we'll go inside and join J.B. Tate and look at some of the details of the interior of the building. Where 
the stairs now in the old courthouse. You know, I've, I've never been up here, and this, this is uh, quite a treat. It's a wonderful old building and has a lot of detail left, even after all the years of neglect. It, it has um, some wonderful moldings around the windows. Um, they're grain painted. The, the, the baseboard molding is about a foot tall. So you can, this was a, a substantial building and, and the people of Bartow County wanted to show it off. And, and so they really put some special touches in it, like the, the grain painting around the windows, mm -hmm. on the, the door frames, on the baseboard moldings. That, that was a sign of, of some fanciness, you know, without being ostentatious. So they did put some, some thought into this building. Michelle, what was what was up on the second floor here of this okay, building? Okay, from we have no photographs that show what it looked like as a courtroom upstairs. Mm -hmm. So from just written descriptions, we um, have found out that the the courtroom was upstairs, and the judges' chambers and the jury rooms. So um, we've identified an area that we think was the jury room. Um, there's some graffiti, wonderful graffiti on the walls there, and so we think that was where the jury met. Um, there's a back staircase that appears to be, I think you and I looked at it earlier, and it appears to be um, of, of the same date or around the same date as the building, but it appears to be pieced together. So I wonder if maybe they salvaged a staircase from another local building to, to put in, into this building, but it's, it's very pretty. Well, this, this building, obviously, when you go downstairs, you can see how many times it's been altered. So it, it could have been the original and just shifted over to um, when people remodel, they often use the mm -hmm. same. Um, but you're right, the, um, and the staircase of vintage would be in the 1860s, early mm -hmm. 1870s, uh, when this uh, building was worked on and completed. Right. Um, and we think it, it's been altered even enough that originally it curved around more than it does today. Okay. We've, we found an arched opening that looks like where the staircase would have curved into. You know, when you look, uh, when you look around this upstairs, this old building, you see where there's been some water damage on the yes. ceiling and the, um, those, what must have been wonderful brick windows at one time when mm -hmm. it was uh, original, in its original condition. Uh, is, is this building sound and safe? Oh yes, it's, it's amazingly sound um, for its age. It was a well-built building when it was built. The walls are, are, I believe, more than a foot thick. And that when they built the building, they used some iron tie rods. And so it, the walls are very plumb, even today. Hmm. And we've had a structural engineer study the building, and he said it's in great shape. So cosmetically, it looks pretty bad, but it, it's not too far gone to be saved. Oh, okay. Well, that would you know, be wonderful if this building could be br brought back to oh, life yes. uh, for the community. Wouldn't it be a wonderful centerpiece for downtown? Now, we don't know whether, are the floors up here original or do we know? I'm not sure, JB. Um, I know the ones downstairs aren't. Mm -hmm. And I know the ceiling upstairs is not original. Originally, it was a plaster ceiling, and you can see the ghosts of it on some of the lath board where some of the ceiling has been removed. Oh, okay. You can see where there was some plaster. Right. Um, so this wooden ceiling was added sometime after the construction, the original construction. Mm -hmm. And you can see the signs of water damage. And um, right now, we think it's not getting any more water damage, but we're not positive. Um, it needs some loving care and restoration. Well, you can obviously tell that it's, uh, not only can you look around here and see that uh, it's been a, in a state of remission mm -hmm. for Lord knows how many decades, mm -hmm. but it's also interesting to know that it's still structurally sound mm -hmm. and, and with um, some resources could be brought back to life. It could be really very beautiful. We have, some of the, we have a copy of the original architect's specifications for the building and it spells out in detail what color the blinds were to be painted. They were supposed to be green. Um, what type of paint and what color paint was used on the mantles, um, white paint. Um, it, it describes the grain painting and, and that it, what type of wood that was supposed to resemble. So we have very detailed records that tell, you know, we could bring it back pretty close to, to what it had been. Um, it also gives some description, and that's what we've always had a, a question about was there was a little balcony off the second floor, off the front entrance. And we've always wondered what that looked like because nobody can remember it. This building ceased to 
function as a courthouse in 1903 when the courthouse with the dome was built. Mm -hmm. So since that time, it's been in private ownership and been a variety of, of things, um, everything from Veach's wholesale grocery to a skating rink to an antique shop. Well, well, let's stop for just a second here. Uh, what's the time frame that we're talking about? What decade was it a, a, a feed and seed store? Hmm? Um, from what we've been able to gather, early 1900s through at least the 1930s, maybe okay. even into the 40s. Um, and probably in the late 40s or in the 50s, it was the skating rink. I think that was a very brief existence, but I, I don't know for sure. And for many years, it was a furniture store, Henshaw mm -hmm. and Morgan, and then later, Shell Horse Furniture was in this building. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, and then an antique shop followed that. So it's been a lot of things. But uh, one of those mysteries was, see, nobody can remember it being the courthouse. All those folks are gone now. And so mm -hmm. we wondered what that balcony looked like. We read about it. And, and people reminisced about, you know, passed down stories about it, but we didn't know exactly what it looked like. And I discovered a picture of a courthouse that used to be in Alpharetta, and it is very similar in style to this building. It's a brick, two-story, Italian-style building, and it had a little balcony off the second story, and it was a little iron, self-supporting balcony. It didn't have long columns down the front. It just sort of hung off the front of the building, and I have a feeling ours was like that. Uh, Michelle, uh, back this, um topic of a skating rink and a feed and seed store. Maybe, maybe we can scramble around and, and um, find people who are associated with that. I, I would like to, to interview them and have that on, on record with the, how the courthouse has been used over the years. I would too, and, and that's maybe this will help because we've had a hard time finding folks mm -hmm. who, who have a memory. Um, I mentioned that it was beaches feed and grain in the right. wholesale grocery for many, many years. And the Veach family was a big family in, in Adairsville. And so um, I've tried to find descendants who might could give us some information, share some information, and so far have not been able to. So I'd love to talk to folks. Surely they have photographs you know, of the building. Right. I did find one fellow, Mr. Holcomb, who's in Adairsville, whose father worked for Veach's in the 1930s. Okay. And he had a wonderful photo, an interior shot of the downstairs when it was the feed and grain store. Um, Does the museum have that? Mm -hmm, I have a copy of that oh, photograph. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. So that, that's a nice one, but you don't see much of the building, but mm -hmm. still it, it, it tells a part of the history of this building. Mm -hmm. And we think when it was beaches that that's when they installed the manual operated elevator. Right. That's yeah. we all fall in love with around here, but was not original to the building. Mm -hmm. um, it, it was added at some point later, but it, but is not new <laughs> at all. Well, when I first saw it, I thought, uh, it, did they have a bell tower, and was that a, and then I was corrected, of course, and, and was told that it was an elevator. Well, but that's a good question because the original um, specifications for the building did mention some sort of little tower or turret for the top of the building, but we, as far as we know, that was never built. Well, let me ask you, what type of pictures do we have on, on this structure? In, in other words, how, how far back in time can we go and say this is the, the courthouse at this point? Well, most of the pictures that I have are from this century, from probably the 1920s up to, okay. to now. And all of those photos show it when it was a nut, something else, some commercial enterprise. I see. And all of those show it without that little balcony that I mentioned. I have a couple of earlier photos, but there were some wonderful big trees downtown, yeah, <laughs> and some of those detail. covered up the front of the building so you couldn't see the balcony. And then another shot was taken across um, the way uh, at the, from the old Park Hotel looking east, and it would have been a great view except that there used to be another little depot downtown called the Seaboard Depot, and right where that depot sits blocks the view of, of the front of this building. And that would have been, that was a pre-1900 picture, so it would have shown us the balcony mm -hmm. if the depot hadn't been there. So we're not having much luck. Well, maybe a program like this, well, somebody in their family archives, mm -hmm. who knows, they may have an old photograph, yeah. and so they would share it with us. That, that would be wonderful. We, we really would like to do that. We had a, a group of students from Georgia State University um, who are studying preservation come down and study the building. They um, measured it, really did a detailed study of the building, and I have their notebook that they put together, and they did some research, some background research on the building, and found out some interesting things for us. We, we discovered the name of the architect. His name was Calvin Fay, and he was with a firm called Fay and Corpett in Atlanta. 
and um, they found out a little bit about him and and um, so that was a great help to us they took a lot of slides so we have that finished product now well good you know um, I, I think the style is it uh, Italian aid mm -hmm. is that the correct mm -hmm. pronunciation now, most of the early courthouses in Georgia, 19th century courthouses, are with the columns and right. uh, very, very similar to what's on what replaced this mm -hmm. courthouse. So it's kind of interesting that um, I, I believe that uh, the building was finished enough in 1869 that they were holding court here. Right. So that this Italianate architecture, which came in right before the Civil War and then continued mm -hmm. for a while after, and then it like all architecture goes in and out mm -hmm. of vogue for a while. But I, I assume that this building was rather unique for the time period. It, it was a style that was popular, you know, if you look at Barnsley Gardens, it's the same style. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was popular in the area you're talking about. And um, probably was popular at one time, and yet it's only one of maybe two or three in the whole state of Georgia courthouses in this style that's left. So it's, it's important for that respect, you know, that it's one of a, a very few of a certain style left. And, um, well, as people can see, the, the building is in poor repair, but it is on the National Register. It is on the National Register and has been for some time. Mm -hmm. And um, is really admired by, by preservationists who come here from Atlanta or from other areas. You know, they, they really like this building. Mm -hmm. I, I wish local folks um, would, would gain an appreciation for it as well. Well, I, I suspect there's a lot of people who are born and raised in Cartersville that really never knew that this was the old courthouse. That's true, JB. That is. And um, they remember it as beaches or they remember it as, as, as a furniture store, but don't remember it as anything else. As a matter of fact, as we were walking in today, um, I, I met a woman on the street who said, Oh, you're going in the old building? And I said, Yes. And she said, My daddy had a, a little general store, and I think it was in the cast station area. And, and she said he came here to buy his groceries for the store because it was a wholesale mm -hmm. supply house. And so I imagine a lot of the, the smaller grocers in, in the surrounding areas came here to purchase their stock. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, she, she remembered this building as, as, as beaches when she was a child and, and coming here with her father. When was the last time this building was rented and released and used um, commercially? It was last used by Allied Manufacturing probably three or four years ago. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. And they mostly used the back of the building. There was um, an addition made about 19, in between 1905 and 1908 off the back of the building, a one-story brick addition. And I think most of what they used was that part of the building. Mm -hmm. um, it, that addition in the 50s or 40s or 50s was the Farmers Exchange. Oh. So a lot of people remember it as that. Um, and they came to that part of the building for, for supplies, farming supplies. You, you know, one thing I think is interesting in, in terms of the detail of, of the upstairs here is that you located some graffiti on the wall. And it, um, I don't recall the date. Do you remember the date? Uh, one of the dates was 1879. Mm -hmm. They said the, the jury was hung at 10 p.m. And they said, <laughs> I want to go home. <laughs> so, it, and there's some nice little drawings. It, it's, that's a wonderful sort of just snapshot of, of what it must have been like to be a juror <laughs> in the 1870s here. I don't think any of us would like to be stuck till 10 o'clock. Well, you know, obviously, <laughs> when, you, when you look around up here, too, and they obviously didn't have air conditioning, so right. they had to have the windows open for mm -hmm. fresh air. Uh, I read an account, and I've also been told this by um, very elderly citizens mm -hmm. who it's been oral history has been passed down, that hardly had they moved into this building and the problems began. And standing up here in this courthouse on the upstairs where the jury would be, a train went by about 10 minutes mm -hmm. ago with a tremendous amount of racket, and I can imagine particularly in the age of the railroads, mm -hmm. that they couldn't get much business done up here. Right. And then the other thing is that um, th they didn't have diesel engines, so the, the, the coal smoke, the old timers have told me, said the whole building, oh, the whole upstairs here just be loaded with black soot and smoke oh, uh, while the public mm -hmm. was up here. Mm -hmm. and, and you can imagine with the windows open and, and as noisy as the trains are, you know, coming by, it, it would be difficult to, to hold court. Maybe while we're here, a train will come by and get an idea of what it's like. Uh, but this courthouse really, uh, like we said earlier, the, the building is structurally sound, mm -hmm. you know, in 1993. 
but they built a new courthouse just a few years after this one, and this was still, I'm sure, a fine building mm -hmm. when they abandoned it. Let's see. They, they've stayed here about 30 years and then moved um, to, to the courthouse with the dome in 1903. So. It just seems to me that they should have anticipated a building this. You know, we are adjacent to the railroad yes, tracks here. Yes, it's very close. Right up next to the, they, they would have thought of that. But Well, I think part, part of it goes back to why the, the, the city um, became the county seat. You know, it wasn't originally laid out as the county seat. So if it had been, planning might have been a little different. And, and it, there might have been a spot. But by the time this building was built, there were already a number of businesses and structures oh, downtown okay. so you had to take what was left as far as land and um, the, the lot I believe was given by someone um, there was a subscription held because if Cartersville was going to be chosen as the county seat the people of Cartersville had to pay for this building and so they subscribed money pledged money to build this building or materials or land it, and, and someone had a lot and so, um, and the jail was built behind here as well. You know, that, that was probably the most controver controversial yeah. issue since the Civil War in that time period was where would the county seat right. be? You know, as everybody in this county knows, uh, when Sherman destroyed the city of Castle, which was the county seat, mm -hmm. they didn't have the resources to rebuild the, mm -hmm. the city. And of course, the other thing is that the railroad bypassed Casper, right. so it wasn't a logical place to and to be rebuilt anyway. Was Cartersville the only um, logical site in the county? Well, or? actually, it, it, it even predates the war, JB. In 1857, Casper's population was declining because it didn't have the railroad. And some folks wanted Cartersville to be the county seat. So mm. even as early as 57, you had people vying to, to, to move the county seat and the legislature said, okay, Cartersville, you can have it if you will agree to build these new county buildings within 90 days and, if, and if the people of the city will pay for it. So that ended that issue until the war. And so after the war, again, here was the decision, where do we move the county seat to? Cartersville seemed like a likely choice, but also some people wanted Cass Station to be the county seat. It was a little community that was very close to Cassville, just a few miles away, and it was on the Western and Atlantic Railroad also. So there was, an election was held, and I think it was about 160 votes difference. Cartersville won by just about 160 votes. So it was, well, it you know, was that's rather really, close. When you think of it, that's really strange because uh, a cast station is just a figment of the imagination yeah. today, isn't yeah. it? I mean, there's not, is there anything up there? Um, there, not, there not a village or a town. No, there, there are some homes that, that have been there um, for a long time. And the walls of a building that was a store building, a stone store building, which sat right next to the old stone depot that used to be there. But even then, I, it wasn't a very big city. Mm -hmm. um, but it. It was, cl I think, it was sort of a sentimental favorite, maybe because it was near Castle, and so it was almost like being in Castle. Oh, okay, so <laughs> the, the rivalry between Castle and Cartersville. So when they had the vote, then the people up in Castle in the north part of the county voted for, for Cass Cass Station. Station. Exactly. <laughs> now, do, do, do we have any photographs of what Cass Station looked like? Um, the, the community? No, I, I just have a picture of the depot from, oh, okay. from Cass Station. I from do pre-Civil War mm -hmm, time period? Mm -hmm, sure do. Um, hmm. it, was, it was given to the museum um, by the Quillian family, and they are some of the early settlers of, the, of that, that area, oh, and okay. um, Reverend B.B. Quillian was even the station agent there. I see. Yeah. That's interesting. Looking for real value in your next car or truck? Look to City Motors Ford Mercury Lincoln for product, price, and service. City Motors has the product, five of America's ten best-selling vehicles. City Motors has the price, a veteran group of experienced, helpful salespeople offering automotive value that keeps customers coming back. A state-of-the-art service department second to none. Product, price, and service from City Motors Ford Mercury Lincoln.
Joining us now on the first floor of the old courthouse is Mr. Frank Dysert. And Mr. Dysert is retired from the post office several years ago. I've been talking with him before we started this. Uh, he told me he's been a farmer, he's had a restaurant, scrap iron business, antique business. Dry cleaning. <laughs> and a furniture store. And a furniture store. But the reason that uh, we asked Mr. Dyster to join us is because at one time, back in 1940, for approximately three to four years, Mr. Dyser operated a skating rink here in the old courthouse, and I thought that would be of interest to, to the people who have a concern about this building. And if you will, uh, Mr. Dyser, um, tell us about 1940 and opening up your skating rink, and also what was the building used for before you got here? Ah, uh, it was uh, Veach Wholesale, Wholesale Grocery Place. Mm -hmm. And uh, it had been for as long since I was a young child. Now, it wasn't in 1940. It's been about 40 years ago. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, that uh, when I saw the building empty, and I've, like, I've been in dry, uh, skating rink business three different times. I'm real fond of skating. Uh, I got in contact with uh, Miss Mebbin from Rome, Georgia, and rented it from her for about three or four years. I'm not even sure of the time. But we had some huge crowds of skaters in here. We went to Chicago and bought floors that were in eight by ten foot sections. I mean, four by ten foot sections. Mm -hmm. uh, we had been a skating rink in Chicago. So my two of my brother-in-laws, uh, George Holden and J.M. Red Crow, were partners with us, sort of a family operation. They're both deceased now. But... Uh, we came in here and laid this floor down and did all this remodeling where the brick, there used to be a brick wall that went right here all the way down the building. Was it, was it on where I'm standing? Did it go on this side too? Uh, well, no, the, the brick wall went straight on through, yeah. Okay, and then and past we, where it is right now. That's right. We took this out and fixed, uh, not cross ties, but uh, switch ties, which were great long cross ties. We bridged it with those so it would be good and safe, mm -hmm. solid. And about the first thing we had to do was remove the big safe that was in here, approximately 12 feet square, of the heaviest iron you ever saw. But I sold it to a real good friend of mine here in Carville, B.B. Uh, White, mm -hmm. and he moved it for me. But we had to do a lot of work to ever get it opened up. Well, you can tell by looking at the building that you, if you're going to have a lot of skaters, right. you need some room for them to move. We, we, I'm sure we had as many as 300 at a time in his gate. Is that right? And the young folks, at that time, there wasn't much to do in cars. That's why I've had two other skating rinks. In fact, the house I live in was built out of one of my old skating rinks. Is that right? It was up where the Morrell Perkins restaurant used to be. And uh, when we moved it, skating rinks are real good for three or four years. And then it wears down, the novelty of it. Mm -hmm. But we we had some mighty fine times in here. Well, I was over here the other day, and we were filming upstairs, and we couldn't determine whether that staircase, uh, it, it's, it looks like it's original to the building, mm -hmm. and I think we might be able to solve the mystery. Yeah, I, I can tell you. I can look at it and tell you it was a fancy staircase. It went up two different angles and then went upstairs. Okay. But it was fine. It was fine. I know we didn't want to destroy it. I, I'm sure we put it upstairs. Right. When we. Well, we, we have some footage of that, so um, yeah. I just wanted to validate that yeah. while I had you here with me. The old uh, elevator that was right over here uh, was still operational. Had great big grass ropes, big as yarn, that you pulled it with. And it, it still would work, but we didn't use it, of course, mm -hmm. for skating ramps here. We blocked it off. But. Uh, I've heard an awful lot of stories. Now, that's, when I was here with skating rink, it was before this overhead pass was built and before this front porch was put on. It was done by, I think Jerry Smith did it in the furniture business. Well, I want to ask you, um, once you got out of the skating business here, then what happened to the courthouse in terms of its uh, use? I'm pretty sure that a furniture store came in here. I'm not sure if it was Jerry Smith at that time. Uh, there's been about three different furniture stores in this building. He had an antique store here. Uh, yeah. Jerry, Jerry was strictly antiques. Mm -hmm. In fact, he's still in antique business up, I believe, in Canada or up close to Canadian border. Mm -hmm. he, uh, 
he was a real smart antique man. He knew his antiques. Well, you know what? Once you start talking about a furniture store and a grocery wholesale yeah. and a skating rink, it's a huge building, so it lends itself to oh, all yeah. of that. It was a it was a wholesale house for groceries for many many years, mm -hmm. about as long as I can remember. It and the furniture stores and the skating rink. Uh, it's about all I can ever remember being in. Well, listen, I appreciate you joining with us uh, today to share with us part of the history of the old building. Well, I wish I knew more than I do, but uh, <laughs> like I say, when you've got five children to raise, you don't have time to study your history like you should, really. Well, you've been a lot of help to us to well, unravel part of the mystery of the building. Well, I'd be, be glad to tell you anything. I've tried to think back, but it's hard to recall some of the stories you hear when you're in here. Well, mostly we were interested in the skating rink story. Yeah. So thank you again, Mr. Dysart. Yeah. Okay. I understand you've done some title work on this building. Yeah, we, both myself and some people in my office have, have looked at the deed records of Bartow County um, going all the way back till 1866 to come forward and see who all had owned the, the building through all those years. And um, I really found some interesting things that I, I didn't know and I had not heard. And it may be something that other people know, but one of the things I found out is that this lot, this portion of the lot that we're standing on in 1866 was called the Cartersville Town Lot. And oh. it, before the city of Cartersville was actually incorporated as a city, it was a town. Mm -hmm. uh, it was actually incorporated as a town in, in 1852. And apparently they had, 40 feet of this 100 foot lot, uh, 40 feet in, on this corner here, going back 160 feet, actually belonged to the city of Cartersville. And on the back of the building, they had what they call their calaboots. And when the county uh, decided to build at this particular site, it was selected, of course, after the war uh, between the states, and, and they selected this site. The county actually had to buy this 40 feet and another 60 feet. So that made up a 100-foot lot going all the way back. And, and they, there's a deed on the records, I think it was in 1867 from the city of Cartersville, the town of Cartersville, signed by the mayor and the, and the alderman at that time, that said that um, they had conveyed the lot to the county, but that they kept the right to continue to operate their calaboose, their jail, on the back of the lot as long as it didn't interfere with the court. Uh, functions and I believe that the the old the, the newer portion of this old building mm -hmm. is the part where the calaboose was. And the other thing that those deeds said back in 1867 when the city conveyed it is that they kept the right or had the right to have their city or their town council chambers inside this building. And I didn't know that until I saw that deed. And they kept that apparently and had their, their town council meetings in this building set in the northwest corner. So that had been this corner over here. They had a, a town council meeting hall and, a, and an office for the mayor. Now in 1873, the, the town sold that right to have that, that portion of the building back to the county for $700. So the city used to actually own a portion of this, oh, of this facility. Yeah, I thought it was. Uh, the other thing that I found, really through your help, because when I went to the courthouse, I was looking for the original documentation to determine uh, how the money was raised mm -hmm. to build the thing in the first place. Mm -hmm. And after looking three days in the attic and in the basement, somebody finally told me that you had all the original documents. That's right. And so you were kind enough to provide me with copies of those. And what I found was that the original funding to build this building was raised by subscription mm -hmm. with, with city residents coming up with money to pay uh, for the original construction of the facility. That's and, right. and I was amazed by that. Uh, I didn't really know that until mm -hmm. you provided me that mm -hmm. information. And what I was amazed about is in 1867, uh, we think times are hard now. In 1867, mm -hmm. during reconstruction, immediately after the Civil War, when Confederate dollars had gone to zero value, uh, 
those people were having a hard time. Mm -hmm. And it really impressed me that there's a long list, the original documents that, that still exist, showing what residents, what people that lived here actually contributed money. And to come up with $9,000 in 1867 was, was absolutely amazing. And, and frankly, it occurred to me that if the original funding came from local citizens mm -hmm. to build this thing, and then here it sits, this is the first public building that was built in Bartow County after the Civil War. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been sitting here vacant for all these years, deteriorating, dilapidated, falling in. And if our, uh, I guess you'd say, ancestors came up with, with $9,000 in 1867 to build it in the first place, it surely looks like that we as current citizens of this community could somehow come up with the funding to buy this building and then renovate it. Uh, I think that's why J.B. Tate asked me to, to appear at the end of this program is to, is to kind of make that little pitch. And I do want to make that pitch that both the city and the county government and residents and, and anybody has an interest in this, we should do what they did in 1867. I think so, David. I think um, it's our building, really, the citizens of Bartow County, and I think it, we deserve to have this building preserved and, and saved. And I'm afraid that if that doesn't happen soon, we may not have it at all. It won't be here. Yeah, that's right. So maybe through, through us sharing the story of this building, we can help save it. Thanks. Thank you. the most comprehensive line of forestry, lawn, and garden equipment in